So the title of this series is Reset. The letter of 1 John is all about reset. It's about getting back to basics in our faith. It's about what's most important. And uh, I'm just excited to get into this with you. And here's what I want to invite you to do this month, besides taking a step to be in community, um, is I want to invite you daily to take some time to read a portion of 1 John, to pray before you read, to pause. By the way, that little space we had right there of just pausing, it's so important. So important in our lives. A lot of us, it's kind of like we go, you know, you climb a huge mountain, you get at the top of a 14er or whatever the case may be, and you get up to the top of it, and we just don't know what to do with ourselves. Take a picture. Now what do we do? Instead of just basking and being in that space and being before God, the creator of heaven and earth, and learning how to just be present to him as he is present, there's nobody in this room that is here by coincidence today. There's nobody watching online that's watching by coincidence. And I just believe God is, God is at work. You know, one of the things that I think that God loves to do, he, he loves to show his love to people who feel like they're on the outside and they don't belong. So John, I want to, one of the things I am looking forward to is during this series, I want to introduce you a little more to John as a person and in doing so, looking at the transformation in his life, seeing Jesus more clearly. Because the goal of all of this is to grow in our relationship with Jesus. How many of you have had somebody in your life that you, you didn't know that well, but then you or you thought you knew them pretty well until you got to talk to somebody that was one of their closest friends. And they told you some stuff about their experience and you just, the lights came on and you went, wow, they're seriously, that was them? That happened in their life? John referred to himself in his gospel as the disciple whom Jesus loved. <laughs> I love that. He's probably the closest person to Jesus of all the 12 disciples. Whenever Jesus pulled the three aside, it was Peter, James, and John. I'm going to give you a little bit of detail every week about John and his life and about the context in which he lived because it was a tumultuous time, a lot of conflict, a lot of battle going on. He could no longer live in Israel. Just a few years before he wrote this letter, he'd been forced to leave and he fled in probably 67 AD to go to Ephesus, which was a town much like Denver. A place where people came from all over the place to live there, people from different cultures and, and different backgrounds. And Ephesus was also known for a lot of idolatry, putting other stuff before God. John went from being the, one of the sons of thunder, Jesus called he and his brother. By the way, John was probably 14 or 15 when Jesus called him. Some scholars estimate maybe up to 24, but in all likelihood, he was a young teenager when Jesus called him. And Jesus called him one of the sons of thunder. That meant he had a super volatile personality. And at the end of his life where we meet him in 1 John, he's known by this time as the apostle of love. So there's this huge transformation in his life. How many of you would like in your volatility, in your personality, to have Jesus transform that into people go, man, you are like one of the most loving people I know. How many of you would like that for somebody you know? <laughs> oh. Sometimes the volatility turns to depression because we can't express it, but I won't get into all that. So... But John, just a fascinating study of his life. One of the key verses from chapter two, verse six, whoever claims to live in Jesus, live in him, be intimate with God as translated, must live as Jesus lived. 
live the same kind of life he lived. So we have a little video we put together this morning, just a few snapshots of John and not actual snapshots of John, but people portraying John. So let's go ahead and watch. This is John, the son of a simple fisherman and brother to James. His life was going to be ordinary until Jesus. Jesus, who called John to follow in his footsteps on earth. John was given purpose and a mission as he became one of Jesus' closest friends, the disciple Jesus loved. Together, the brothers James and John are given the name the Sons of Thunder, which tells us John was not a meek and quiet guy. Once he even asked Jesus to call down fire from heaven and torch a town that didn't want Jesus to visit. He did not lack passion. John had the honor of following Jesus everywhere. He witnessed the power and the mercy of his life firsthand. He was right there with Jesus throughout his ministry. He was at the foot of the cross when Jesus died and was one of the first to see the empty tomb when Jesus defied death itself. And John was and will be for all of history, the first to believe. John wrote three letters to the church, and we'll dive into his first letter and explore the passion John had for the love of God. Before we read, would you just bow and pray with me? Lord, we thank you for the power of your word. Jesus, I pray that we would encounter you together in this space, that we would encounter you, everyone in this room, we would encounter you during the week, that you would give us understanding as we read your word, and that, Lord, it would be something so tangible today. Thank you for the power of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so First John chapter 1 starts out. We're only going to cover four verses today. Verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we've seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. Let me just pause there for a moment. Um, this is probably around 85 AD. John's probably around 70 plus years of age. John, this, his letter is different than the other letters and that it just doesn't go boom, 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 but it's almost like somebody in their 70s and that he's, he kind of talks in paragraph form. That makes sense? Somebody will just kind of say a few things and then move to a few other things and then move to a few other things and has no real concern for certain things that <laughs> others are. We'll come back to this piece of him hearing and seeing with his eyes. But here's what, I, here's what I want to underline with that, is that it's been some 50 years since Jesus was walking the earth, and it's been 50 years since Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. And so there's people, the gospel, the good news of Jesus, followers of Jesus, is just spreading like wildfire all over the place. And a lot of change has happened. And local church communities are rising up everywhere and there are leaders that are being raised up and people being equipped and God's pouring out his gifts and just crazy stuff is happening all over the place. Just read the book of Acts. But you fast forward 50 years and local church communities were struggling with their identity and struggling with what was most important. And some people had come in and introduced destructive teachings that were contrary. In fact, one of the primary ones was Gnosticism, a form of it was called docetism, and that was that Jesus really didn't come in the flesh. He was just like a ghost, like an apparition. And they taught that all matter was evil. How many of you have been around people that are so legalistic that it's like anything that has to do with your physical body, it must be evil? And you're just kind of taught to be fearful and uptight well, that's what was going on with the Gnostics. And that's why this is so significant when John says, we've seen it with our eyes, looked upon and have touched with our own hands, the word of life. 
Verse two, the life was made manifest and we've seen it and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. It was made known to us. Verse three, that which we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you so that you too may have fellowship with us and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is a whole different deal. You know, it's said of John that at the end of his life, a few years after this, he was exiled to an island because he, there was commotion that was being call, caused and that's where he received Revelation, the book of Revelation. And it was said of John later in life that they would bring him into local church communities. They would, they would have to carry him in. He was the only apostle that was still alive. By the way, all the others were martyred except for John. John was put in a vat of boiling oil in Rome and he climbed out of the vat and was okay. I think when I look up stud in the dictionary, it's John, okay? I don't know if he had some oil burn marks on him or anything like that, but I'd be like, that's the guy that climbed out of the boiling oil. Wow. So at the end of his life, they would bring him into a congregation and they would, this is the guy that was with Jesus 50, 60 years ago. And the story is told that John would say one simple thing. Everybody's waiting, just waiting for this guy to say something. This guy was with Jesus. And he would say, little children, <clears throat> I would imagine him clearing his throat. <clears throat> little children, love one another. And then just silence. And then again, three times he said, little children, love one another. This is the son of thunder who you wanted to call down fire on people. Amazing. So he says, we've heard, we've seen with our own eyes. That's the imagery here is very important because you can see something. This is just something coming into view. Everybody in this room at some level has probably seen Jesus in that you've seen something about him or heard something about him. But when he says we looked upon him, he takes it to a whole nother level. That, that word means to gaze intently upon. It means to stare at something until you grasp what and who it is. What a picture. He said, we not only heard, we saw, but we also looked upon him. And then he says that we've touched him. Jesus, when he rose from the dead, remember when he showed up to the disciples, he said, come and touch the wounds. I'm not a, he was basically saying, I'm not a ghost. It's me. Put your hands in the wounds in my side. And they touched him. Do you understand how powerful this is? Some 50 years after Jesus walked the earth, that this guy is saying, we saw, we heard. We looked, we actually touched him. That's why I love the picture of communion that Jesus gave it to us because he wants us to get in touch with how tangible his love is and his person is. That we take the bread and it's that symbol of his body, but it's something so physically concrete that he's saying, I want you to think of it this way. This is my body broken for you. Eat it in remembrance of me. Whenever you get together and hang out at a meal, and you celebrate my sacrifice just in such a tangible way. Not only hearing, not only seeing, but looking upon and touching.
Have you ever been given something by a family member that's died and, and you take that thing and you just kind of remember them? You Anybody know what I'm talking about? Like an old keepsake or something that was valuable to them? I still have this little pouch that my, my grandfather had these coins that he had saved and just, I used to think they were probably worth a lot of money and found out they weren't worth anything. But, but I still have that because I remembered. And when I take that, I remember my grandfather. In fact, I still have tools in my garage that have Thompson written on them. And my grandfather's writing with his Sharpie. Lest anybody doubt whose toolbox this is or this ladder. I still have that stuff. And I, rem- I can take like that pouch and just, I just remember and thank God for my grandfather. And I'm telling you, that's more than just going, oh, I just kind of remember him. John's calling us in this to something deeper. And some of you, you may, this is for all of you who are stronger left brain people, more analytical, maybe engineers, or you just like all the logical stuff. Put this slide up. I just want you to see this is very important, no matter which side of your brain that you use most of all. But the, of the ancient manuscripts that we have, the time span is between the original document and copies that were made. Do you know that we have only 10 copies of Caesar's writings and there was a time span of a thousand years from the time it happened to when it was copied? Seven from Plato, 1200 years, 20 from Tacitus. I mean, Homer's Iliad, 643 copies, that's a lot, but 500 year time span. But I look at this and this is amazing. A lot of people go, oh, the Bible, you know, it's just a bunch of guys' opinions. Over 24,000 copies of the New Testament. And they began to be copied within 25 years. That's amazing. And if I could go into detail at the painstaking effort that was made with every page, with every word, with every grammatical point. He says, the life was made manifest. We've seen it and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. I love N.T. Wright's statements on this, the New Testament scholar. He says, the life of God's coming age, many mistakenly think of eternal life as just some future spiritual reality where they pray a prayer and hold on to a promise. Instead, the ancient Jews believed that history was divided into two periods or ages. There was the present age, which was full of misery, suffering, injustice, and oppression, and the age to come, when God would come to sort it all out, make everything right, and in particular, rescue his people from suffering in the world. And what John is saying to us, and what is announced in the scripture is that Jesus has come bringing the powers of the age to come and breaking into this present evil age. And so we can encounter, that's why he taught us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Everything isn't perfect yet, but we can encounter the kingdom now. Aren't you thankful for that? It's really the only thing I think that makes sense of suffering. So when you read that about eternal life, a lot of us kind of go to this thing of, you know, well, That means you need to pray that prayer and you need to do this. And it's like, you know what? It's about so much more than that. Verse three, that which we've seen and heard, we proclaim also to you so that you too may have fellowship with us. Indeed, our fellowship is with the father and with his son, Jesus Christ. That word fellowship's a rich word. It's, it's It's not like you get to be a part of a social club You get to wear like a lanyard that says you're part of the thing. You get a special parking pass. That's not what he's talking about. 
Fellowship is shared life. It means that the grit and the grime and the mountaintops and the joys of life is something that we share in together as followers of Jesus. He says, indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son. Do you understand how powerful that is? Even when we take communion, indeed, our shared life is with the Father and with the Son. That's what you're invited into. That's what we're called to. Indeed, take note of it. And it should result in joy. A few days ago, I had a guy out at my house and he was doing some work and he brought in a young guy with him. And, and when he got done, standing out in the driveway with him and just having conversation and asking him some questions. And I just really like the guy. I mean, he's an older guy, actually he reminded me of my grandfather. Likes to hunt and fish and kill stuff. <laughs> and as I'm talking to him, I just, I'm praying and going, Lord, I would like to talk to him about you, but I don't know this guy. How can, how can that come up? I don't feel like this is a mistake. And I'm wrestling through that awkwardness. Just, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. And I'm like, should I, and I'll, sometimes I'll just say, do you have any spiritual belief? But I didn't feel like that. I was supposed to say that. And, and so I'm wrestling through this and it gets to the point where it's like, he's gonna get in his truck and leave. And I'm thinking, okay, well, it's just probably not gonna happen. But he lingered. <laughs> talking to me. And so I, I kind of, I don't know about you, but for me, it's kind of like getting on the high dive. It's like you walk, you stand clear on the back of the board and go, yeah, I'm up on the high dive. People are like, get out on the end of the board if you think you're really on the high dive. So I said, so is there anything like I could pray for you for 2019? And he goes, well, yeah, actually for my health. See, I actually felt weirder about it than he did, bringing it up. You could, you could pray for my health and a couple other things. And, he's, and he just started then talking about how crazy things are in Colorado. He's like, man, over the years, man, people are crazy. Have you been out driving? He, he lives up north. And he just started just telling me a couple things about that. And then he said this. And, it, and by the way, the worker was about 15 feet away sitting in the seat of the truck, but he's listening to everything. And so he kind of brings it down and he goes, it's just hard to keep good people because nobody wants to work for any length of time. And I said, how long has he been working with you? And he goes, that's my son. And right then, I knew it. Right then in my heart, something just clicked. It was like, oh my gosh, Lord, here I am wrestling with what to say. You brought a father and son to my house. And so I said, hey, come over here. And he's like, <laughs> I said, I'm gonna pray for you and your dad. What's your name? Caleb. I said, wow, do you know what Caleb means? Do you know what your name means? Do you know what that means that you're gonna, you are supposed to go after stuff that nobody else wants to go after? He's like, he goes, yeah, actually I know that. So I said, well, can I pray for you guys? So I just start to pray for him. And the Holy Spirit just shows up. What do I mean by that? I can just tell they're being touched. And the boy's 25, Caleb, and he's, he's being visibly, something's happening. And so I just prayed for blessing, prayed a few things, and then and I'm listening, and I get done, and I just had an overwhelming sense of God's pleasure. I mean, this is like, I love doing this more than anything on this planet. I love it when Jesus shows up in the most unexpected places. And Caleb, I just kind of popped him on the chest and said, God's hands on you. And get this, get this. So the dad tells me, 
We used to serve in a food bank in South Denver years ago. We were part of a church. And some junk happened and we blew out. And I moved way away and I've been away. This morning, they're probably at a friend of mine's church. I texted him the information. I, I walked around. We get done and the sun gets in. I mean, the sun's going to help him. And he gets into the truck. And I walk around to the side of the truck and I'm like, I just, I'm so overcome with, and for me, this is really excited. I'm so overcome with excitement and joy. And I just want to tell him, thank you for letting me pray with you and just it's great to hear some of your story. He rolls the window down and goes, man, I can't tell you how much that meant. Oh my gosh. So we've been texting since. And I'm just telling you that I believe that if you want to be a part of what Jesus is doing. He invites you to more than just filling your own reservoir. What would it look like for you to be burdened with somebody, with God's heart for somebody that you work with or a neighbor or somebody else? Some of you have somebody coming to mind already as I'm telling this story. God's put them in your life. What would it be like to step out on the end of the board and get in that awkward space of just going, is there something I could pray for you? Or do you have any spiritual belief? What do you think? Let me tell you a little about Jesus and what he's done in my life. You don't have to be perfect to do that. But I'm telling you, this is what it is. Many of you in this room, you're going, I don't know. I mean, if God would tell, if God's led me to do that, I would do it. If he brought it up in the conversation, oh, give me a break. I did that for like 15 years. I was like, Lord, if you want me to talk to them about you, just let it come up. Donut just doesn't come up. He's like wanting to push me into a place of risking. What does it look like to make known the life of Jesus to others? What does it look like to hit reset in your life? Because I'm here to tell you today that the new year in terms of God's agenda is more than resolutions. It's more than just trying to change a couple things. It's more than even wanting to grow spiritually. It's about becoming like Jesus and entering into the shared life of the Father and the Son. And that's a great invitation. Can you hear him inviting you this morning? Can you hear Jesus saying, come on, let's walk together. You might go, well, I'm pretty jacked up in some areas of my life. He's, you think he has a surprise to him? He loves you. So this morning, let's just, as we take communion together, let's just hit the reset button, ask Jesus to join us. Lord, we are thankful this morning for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord, that for this story, this witness of John to who you are. And we pray that we could enter into that shared life. And even as we have communion today, Lord, that heaven would break in. I pray for each one here that this week, that even as they read, as they go about life and jump back into things, I pray, Lord, you would come with grace and mercy and power. Before we have communion, how many of you had somebody come to mind as we were talking this morning, as I was talking this morning? Okay. I'm not going to ask you to come up and share. Who was it? No. <laughs> <laughs> and if you didn't, just, just ask. Keep asking Jesus.